Peter Parfit and welcome to part two of my video about the Festool CMS unit with the TS55R circular saw inside. And together these two make a very portable table saw. Now in this part I'm going to be telling you a few things that this setup is capable of doing for you, but don't worry, not too many demonstration cuts. There is one technique I want to show you which is not recommended by Festool, which I use a lot. And after that I'm going to give you some conclusions and tell you where I think this setup could be improved a little. So here we go. I thought you would really want to know just what sort of timing it takes to assemble the saw within the CMS unit. And also for that matter to disassemble it. Because if you're travelling on site with just one saw, uh, then you want to be able to change it from guide rail mode to table saw mode fairly quickly. Now these two videos, the assembly and the disassembly, have been shot in one go and I've not edited them at all. So in both cases they are running from start to finish from the beginning of the setting up or the disassembly to the end of that process. Now the clock started at exactly five o'clock. So when it gets to the end I'll put up the actual timing uh, that each took and both of them will be just under two minutes. You should note that in the assembly case I'm using the top of the CMS unit uh, as my working platform. It actually would be easier to use the top of a workbench to put the saw into the CMS support unit but I wanted to show that it can be done sitting on top of the CMS base unit if you don't have anything else available. One other thing that I've now done is that I've made up a shortened plug-it cable, especially for using uh, with the CMS unit itself. So that end goes into the uh, socket on the CMS base unit and the plug-it plug itself goes into the saw. Now if you don't want to cut up a plug-it cable to make up a shortened one like this, you can buy the wherewithal to do this from most Festool dealers. Well there we go, we're just about at the end now and you can see the timings there for both processes. Now I think that's pretty good. Now one of the key reasons why I've got this particular setup with this particular saw and this CMS unit is that I do a lot of box making and when you make a box you make a, an enclosed piece of woodwork and then you saw the lid off. Now in order to saw the lid off you have to remove your blade cover and your riving knife extension but it is pretty useful if there is still a riving knife to help protect you and also to help ease the flow of the work past the blade. And that's exactly what we have with the TS55R in this combination. It's got that nice wide riving knife and that's going to help me with the work that I want to do. Festool do not recommend that you do this and neither do I. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a rebate in this piece of maple. It's going to be 10 millimeters across and 10 millimeters deep. And I've already set the saw blade to 10 millimeters in height. And I've also set the guide fence so that you get a 10 millimeter cut. You'll see me use two push sticks. And my hands at no stage go anywhere near that rotating blade. Also, I make sure that I'm standing so squarely that there's no way that I can fall onto the blade if something were to go wrong. So it's safety, safety, safety. On go the safety glasses. I check that everything's properly set up. I've got my two push sticks, I've got my piece of wood, and here I go. came away. For me that's a very useful piece of wood and there is a really nice clean rebate 
And I, I use this technique quite a lot and it saves me having to cut out huge quantities of uh, material using a router. Sometimes I finish this off with a router depending on what the application is. But for most of my work, that's all I need to do. I've got a different setup now and I'm going to do a deeper rebate here and you'll see the effect that I've generated. <laughs> Because I'm using this side fence on the high side here, it does give me a surface to help me make sure that my cuts are square. So I find this technique extremely useful. But if you do it, make sure you use two push sticks. This shape of push, push stick is particularly useful because when you're using it, you can use both surfaces there to trap the wood and keep it in and upright. So, if you're going to do this, make sure you have two good quality push sticks. Now I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of the accuracy to start with the machine. Here are as a close-up you can see I've set the scales to a certain width and I've measured it and it is spot on. So once the scales are set, they're perfect. You can cut up to 240 millimeters easily on the table saw, so it may save you having to take the saw out and use the guide rails if you know that. And then uh, next I'm cutting a piece of oak and just see how smoothly uh, that goes through. And that uh, riving knife extension uh, is really doing its stuff because you see the oak starts to pinch uh, as it's uh, trying to pinch anyway the blade uh, because of the tensions in the wood. Well I've just taken delivery of the uh, dust extraction set that goes uh, with the uh, CMS unit and it comes with quite a few pieces. There's a piece of 27mm hose, a piece of 36mm hose, an end connector for 27mm hose, an end connector for the 36mm hose, a Y splitter which has a 27 and a 36 connection and this end goes into your dust extractor. Uh, and a clip which is used to hold the 27mm hose on the side of the CMS unit. I'll quickly show you how these sh should be put together because sometimes people find these connections a bit of a mystery. I will start by putting the connector on the end of the 36mm hose and this is the order that you do things. First of all you put this uh, retaining clip onto the tube in question. You then screw on uh, this part, and there's a thread that you can only insert from one side, so there's only one right way of doing it, and it's a left-hand thread. So you screw that on left-handedly, and then the final part, the actual uh, end cap itself, goes on over there, and then you marry up uh, this clip to it. And there's a pair of holes, one there and one on the other side, there's a pair of lugs on this piece, one there and one on the other side, and what you need to do is to marry those two up, and it should just be a push fit. You might need to just encourage it slightly, but there it is, done. Now, if you ever need to remove one of these, uh, what you need to do is, using a screwdriver, sometimes you can do it with your thumbnail, but a screwdriver is easier, just gently push in uh, to this uh, little lug, uh, which you see there, and that then will allow that part of the clip to separate, keep it separated with your finger, go to the other side and encourage it to do the same and then you will then find that clip comes off, you now screw that inwards because it's a left handed thread, that comes off and then that comes off. So it comes off pretty 
easily when you need to take it off. And it goes back on uh, just as easily as well. So there we go. That's it. Done. Next we're going to attach uh, the hoses to the Y clip and the hoses uh, attached to these, these pieces here uh, with the little slot. It's pretty obvious. Uh, and again it's a left hand thread. Then do the same for the other hose. That one's in fully. That one's in fully. And this part now is ready to go. And this is how it's intended to go. Obviously the Y connector has to go into your dust extractor. The narrow hose, the 27mm hose, is designed to go into the blade guard and you just have to pinch it very slightly just to get it to change shape because the hole in the blade guard is oval and not circular. And then you remember we had this clip. The idea of the clip is that you can attach uh, the clip to the side of the uh, CMS unit like so and then push the hose into it and it holds it there so that it's not in the way of any uh, material that might be passing uh, across the surface of the CMS uh, module. And then the final end, which is the end designed to go on the saw, just goes up under there, gets connected to the saw, and then you're ready to go. Now you would have seen in uh, some of the shots that uh, I have a green hose connected here. That's because before I received the uh, actual extraction set for the CMS unit, uh, I wanted to get on and do some filming. So I used a 27mm hose, uh, which I connected uh, to the blade guard, and that then went to an old uh, vacuum cleaner that I had. I'm now going to do an angle cut on this piece of wood. I've set this to about 20 degrees. Uh, I've set it up, so let's see how it goes. <laughs> Pretty effortless, and uh, again, as you would expect from Festival, a beautiful cut. Well, you've seen me playing around with the TS55R circular saw within the CMS unit. Now it's time for me to tell you what I think of it. I actually think that this is the bee's knees as far as small portable table saws go. It suits all of my current requirements, and you've seen the sort of thing I get up to a lot. Uh, cutting rebates and also uh, cutting my uh, box lids off uh, and it's really easy to do with this setup. The cuts are very accurate, they're very clean and you expect that from Festool. The dust extraction is brilliant and you expect that from Festool. I've identified a couple of very minor issues which I really feel I ought to tell you about. First of all, I think the mains cable on this is slightly too short. It's 2.3 metres long. But I can understand why it's that length, because I think the Festool philosophy uh, is that you have your extractor close by, because that's reflected in the length of the extractor hose uh, that you have when you buy the extractor kit. But that's pretty minor. Changing the angle of inclination is a little tricky. You've got to undo the two clamps, well, you would expect to do that, but then in order to read the angle on the gauge, you've got to look up from underneath, uh, and it's not the easiest things to do. But once you've identified the right angle and you've tightened up, uh, its cuts are absolutely brilliant, and you've seen me doing uh, an angled cut just now. So there's no issue with its function, it's just how you set that angle. It's just slightly awkward. So uh, I don't see that as a big issue. Well, that's it for now. I've really enjoyed doing this, and thank you for uh, sticking it to the very end. Uh, I've now got the most brilliant portable table saw. Uh, my next ambition is to get the CMS support unit for my big OF2200 router, because then I can swap those in, out in a matter of seconds, uh, and then I've got the best of both worlds. I've got a, a router table and a table saw, uh, which I can take away with me wherever I go. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, go and get one of these, you won't be disappointed. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.